Hello everyone, today we're going to recursively search and insert in a binary search tree. So let's get started. If you're new here, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, click that notification bell if you enjoyed this content. So a binary search tree is a binary tree in which any node A is greater than all the values in its left subtree and less than all the values in its right subtree. And that applies to every single node in our binary search tree, where all the values to the left of that node are smaller than that node, and all the values to the right of that node are larger than that node. Now let's look at the search operation. So here we're searching for a node with value 50. So starting from a root node 80, we ask if 50 is equal to 80. Since 50 is not equal to 80, we ask if 50 is less than 80. Well, 50 is less than 80, so we'll go to the left. Then we ask if 50 is equal to 40, and 50 is not equal to 40, so we ask if 50 is less than 40, and 50 is not less than 40, so we'll go to the right. Then we ask if 50 is equal to 60, and 50 is not equal to 60, so we ask if 50 is less than 60, and 50 is less than 60, so we'll go to the left. Then finally, we ask if 50 is equal to 50, and 50 is equal to 50. So we found the node with value 50 that we're searching for, and we're done. Now, let's look at the tree class that will be used to implement our search method. So here we have a tree node class with three instance variables. We have some data that will be associated with every node in our binary search tree, and we have our left and right reference variables that will be the left and right subtrees respectively in our binary search tree. And we have a constructor that takes an arguments data that will be used to initialize our instance variable data with. Now, let's get to the search method. Going to the start of our method, the first thing we do is check if our data 50 is equal to our current node's data, which is 80. And 50 is not equal to 80, so we check if our 50 is less than 80. And 50 is less than 80, so the next thing we want to do is check if our left is not equal to null. Because if our left was equal to null, then that would mean that that node does not exist in our tree, because we cannot go further left. So, since our left is not equal to null, we can call search on our 80's left subtree. And we're now back at the start of our method again. And we check if our data 50 is equal to 40. And well, 50 is not equal to 40, so again, we check if our 50 is less than 40. Now, 50 isn't less than 40, so we jump to our else and we check if our right is not equal to null. For the same reason when we checked if our left is not equal to null. So since our 40's right is not equal to null, we'll call search on 40's right subtree. And again, we're back at the start of our method. So this time, we check if our 50 is equal to 60. And 50 is not equal to 60, so we check if our 50 is less than 60. Since our 50 is less than 60, we'll check if our left is not equal to null again. And our left is not equal to null, so we'll call search on our 60's left subtree. Now we're back at the start of our method again. This time, we check if our 50 is equal to 50. And 50 is equal to 50. So at this point, we can return a copy of the reference to our node with value 50 back to the method that called it and so on, and so forth, until all stack frames pertaining to our search method are popped off of the call stack, and we're done. Now, let's look at inserting a value in a binary search tree. Now, this method is going to be very similar to searching for a value because we have to search in order to insert, as we'll see. So, the first thing we want to do is determine if 55 is less than 80. And 55 is less than 80, so it should be inserted in 80 to the left subtree, so we'll go to the left. Now, we check if 55 is less than 40. And 55 is not less than 40, so it has to be inserted in 40's right subtree, so we'll go to the right. Now again, we check if 55 is less than 60. And 55 is less than 60, so it should be inserted in 60's left subtree, so we'll go to the left. And again, we check if 55 is less than 50. But 55 is not less than 50, so it should be inserted in 50's right subtree. And since 50 is a leaf node, it means that we can't search further. So we'll insert our node with value 55 as 50's right child. And we're done! Now let's take a look at the insert method. Now as we've seen before, the way we approach this is going to be very similar to that of the search method. So let's go through it. The first thing we do is check if our data is less than our current node's data. So is our 55 less than 80? And 55 is less than 80. So the next thing we do is check if our left is not equal to null. And the reason we check if our left is not equal to null here is because we know that if our left is equal to null, then it means that we're at a leaf node and we have to insert at that point. However, our left is not equal to null, so we'll call insert on 80's left subtree. 
Now, we're back at the start of our method again, and we check if our 55 is less than 40. And well, 55 is not less than 40, so it has to be inserted in 40's right subtree. So we go to our else, and we check if our right is not equal to null. Again, because if our right is equal to null, it means we're at a leaf node we have to insert at that point. So since our right is not equal to null, we'll call insert on our 40's right subtree. And again, we're back at the start of our method. So again, we make a check. We check if 55 is less than 60. And since 55 is less than 60, it should be inserted in 60's left subtree. So again, we check if our left is not equal to null, and our left is not equal to null, so we'll call insert on 60's left subtree. And again, we're back at the start of our method. And so we check if our 55 is less than 50. Well, 55 is not less than 50, so it has to be inserted in 50's right subtree. So again, we check if our right is not equal to null. And well, our right is equal to null, which means we have to insert at this point. So what we'll do is create a new tree node object and have our right reference variable refer to that new object, and we're done. And this method does not return anything, so all the stack frames get popped off our call stack one after the next. Now, let's look at the complexity analysis. So for the time complexity, since our search and insert methods are traversing the height of the tree, our big O will be in terms of h, where h is the height of the tree. Now moving on to the space complexity, our big O will also be in terms of h, because the number of stack frames in our call stack pertaining to our search and insert methods will also be based on the height of the tree. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.